So there was another interesting piece of news that I wanted to discuss. So I don't know if you are following it, but um, Iraq just had its uh, parliamentary elections. And it was interesting because a couple of names who won, uh, who were the heads of parties who won big shares um, came up. So uh, Nouri al-Maliki, was, came, his party came in third place. And the party that came in first place um, was headed by an individual named Muqtada al-Sadr. And if you've been paying attention to the Iraq war for a long time, that name will probably sound familiar to you. He has been radically opposed to the United States, which not particularly surprising, we are occupying there. But he is seen as more or less a toady of Iran, which is his business, whatever. But we can see that essentially we are in a position where we have actually allowed this individual to come to prominence, and there's no guarantee that he would have otherwise. Part of the reason he got so popular is because he railed against the American invasion. And it's hard to say if he would have been as popular if he had not had the U.S. as his as his antagonist that he would constantly rail against. We also know him to be a, a hardliner, but more or less in the United States, he's kind of known as an enemy, right? He's known as, as a public enemy, not just because he has ties to Iran, which in fairness, he denies. But, you know, for all the other things that he has done, while we have been in Iraq, which oftentimes involved getting popular off of the mistakes and missteps of the United States. So this is just one more failure of our forever wars. When we invaded Iraq to kill Saddam Hussein, who, by the way, had nothing to do with 9-11, just a reminder there, we were hoping that we could create a puppet government, much like we had in Afghanistan, and that we would essentially kind of have a, a vassal state relationship with Iraq, and we would be able to protect Israel and deter the Iranian threat. That was more or less what we were doing. Also, there's some speculation, uh, which I think is fairly um, well-reasoned, that George W. Bush was just finishing the war his father started and lost in Kuwait, so it's, there's a number of reasons. Anyway, we shouldn't be there. That's obvious. But, <clears throat> and of course, the Iraq war is a failure for dozens of reasons. Um, not, not most of which, of course, is, not least of which, of course, is the mass death of civilians uh, in a country that had nothing to, and the mass destabilization of a country that, you know, had nothing to do with attacking us. But you can add to the list of failures now that one of our public enemies high up on that list is now running around as the lead as potentially the next prime minister of Iraq. Now, it'll be interesting to see what he um, does or says as prime minister. He, he'll he have the opportunity to form a government. He got, I think, 73 seats out of their 325 um, member parliament. So he doesn't have a majority, right? He'll need to form a government. But he is in the best position to form a government, and who knows where he'll find allies, right? One of, the th one of the things that's interesting about parliamentary democracies is that oftentimes in these uh, situations where you don't have a flat-out victory of a, one party is that small parties who can be kind of strung together in order to create a coalition have immense amount of power once the election is over because essentially... They make up a very small puzzle piece, but an essential puzzle piece that keeps the government together. So, and by the way, you can see this in, in many parliamentary democracies around the world. But if there is a small party with a set of extremist views, but those views align a little bit with Muqtada al-Sadr, and by the way, we in the United States thoroughly believe that he's an extremist, and for good reason, right? Those, those fears are not unfounded. Um then they can get their agenda through too. And, and the same is true for every little tiny party that might be somewhat aligned with Al-Sadr. And you move Al-Sadr into a position where he has to take even more extremist views than he may have already taken. And by the way, all of this just stems from our involvement in interference with Iraq for whatever good it did, which probably is none. So not only did we destabilize a country with our war, not only did we create a circumstance where 
we have killed plenty of people who had nothing to do with 9-11. Not only have we killed innocents, but now we've taken someone who we thought was dangerous, essentially made them the prime minister of, of Iraq, and now he's in a situation where he may have to concede to more idealistically extreme positions to form a government. So this just is a giant failure on the part of the United States. And by the way, this is one more sign that we need to come home, right? And I'm going to talk about in another in, in the next segment why it's so uh, one of the reasons it's so important for us to come home for a different reason. But if we're going over there and we're making enemies, and then those enemies are getting so popular just off of being our enemy that they get to run the whole country, I think it's time to leave. I think it's time to acknowledge that we failed, the forever war is a failure, and we should come home. 